here. Hey Lisa, I heard you were in Alaska getting ready for a workshop, so I wanted to ask you 21 questions. Do you have some time? I do, it's a good time. We just got back from scouting wildlife for our next trip. We saw a moose and calf along the riverside, eagles, Bonaparte skulls, Arctic terns. It's been a great morning. And we even caught some dinner. We got some sac sockeye salmon, and uh, which is wonderful right from the Kenai River. And hey, I got an idea. While Neil cleans the salmon, we're gonna go up and grill it. Do you wanna meet me at the bar? Yeah, let's do it. Come on up, I'm gonna grill some of this salmon. You can have some with me and we'll chat. All right, so I'll get right to it. What type of photographer are you? I'm a wildlife and nature photographer. I have been so since I was a kid. I just love nature and love being out in it. And I absolutely adore wildlife. And what got you started in photography? My great aunt Jo, when uh, she was in her 90s, started with me when I was a kid. I was about eight years old and she taught me about birds and bird watching. And I just adored her and I've been doing it ever since. I see you're traveling again, but how have you been adapting your work over the last year? So I've been teaching a lot of webinars and I absolutely love doing that. I've been doing webinars since about 2006. I had a lot of content prepared, uh, so I was just ready to rock and roll when COVID happened and we had to shut down. I feel very lucky about that, very, uh, very appreciative about that, but it's been very good for me. And again, I love teaching, so I'm happy to do it online, in person, wherever I can do it. What was your first camera? My first camera was a Kodak 126 film camera. Uh, it was, uh, gosh, probably when I was about eight years old is when I got it. And then at about 13, I got my Canon A1 film camera and I have just loved doing it ever since. And what's your go-to camera and lens now? Right now I have the Canon R5, which I love. It's a mirrorless camera. And I use it with the Tamron 150 to 600 millimeter uh, G2 lens. And that combination is fantastic. So sharp, so accurate. I, I, it is a delight to shoot with that combination. What drew you to nature and wildlife photography? Well, I just, again, I've been a wildlife and nature lover since I was a kid. So that just makes perfect sense for me. And if I had to shoot anything, that's my first choice. That's what brings me peace when I'm out in the wild. That's what I love focusing on literally and figuratively. Uh, it's my joy. Your images always show so much emotion. How did you come to master your style? You know, to me, style is so closely related to taste and the things that I really enjoy when I look at artwork have a lot of gauzy, ethereal nature to them. They're very peaceful, serene, emotionally evocative. And that to me is what I gravitate to when I take photographs. You've mentioned that you don't only just shoot, you also do a lot of teaching. Tell me about your educational programs. Yeah, so I do teach a lot. I have a lot of online cl classes and webinars through focusyourart.com, which is the business that myself and Amy Johnson started to really blend a combination of live and on-demand instruction, which is what people want with a lot of support. So we've been doing a lot of that. It's right in my wheelhouse. I love teaching, she, loved te she loves teaching. And, you know, she's a former educator and I'm a former educational psychologist. So it's just a really good fit. We get teaching and uh, know the best protocols and practices for doing so. And we translate that to other photographers and help them learn what they want to learn. So it's been a really fun uh, business and a really fun project for us. And it's been very successful so far. What's your favorite part of what you do? You know, there's a lot of favorite parts. I'm not a one lane person. I love to do a lot of different things. But I have to say, for example, here in Alaska, doing a workshop or tour up here, it is such a joy to bring people here and to show them their first moose or bear or glacier or whatever it might be, uh, to watch the beautiful blue Kenai River go by and just sit in amongst all of this wonderful wildlife and have that serenity. I mean, you can sit right here at the lodge and we see moose going across the river. We saw four moose going across the river in about 10 minutes the other day, two different pairs. There's eagles right across the river nesting, Bonaparte skulls, Arctic terns, I, and Alaska is just so abundant with wildlife. It is definitely my happy place. Do you have any projects you're working on or coming up? I've always got a lot going on, but I would say three projects that I'm really excited about the most 
in addition to cooking the salmon, is I have my optics presentation. So B&H Optic 2021 is an amazing free virtual conference where we bring in all kinds of different instructors. They've brought in me this year as well. And I'll be teaching some of my favorite tips on how to photograph on rainy, overcast, kind of dreary, drab days if you're on vacation or on a photo workshop and how to really get the most out of moments you probably normally overlook. So that I'm really excited about. The second thing that I'm really excited about, speaking of Alaska, is that I have a whole bunch of stuff coming up over the next two years that really is going to expand on all the magic that I create here. I'm so excited about it. I can't share everything just yet, but there's a lot of really positive things going on and I cannot wait to share Alaska with so many people in some really new and exciting ways. So that's two. Number three is focusyourart.com. This is the company that Amy Johnson and I have started. We're both educators. We both love teaching, genuinely love teaching, and we're both photographers. And we're inviting some other photographers as well. We're gonna be teaching you all about not only photography, but other things down the road. And that business is just so exciting to me because I can do it from anywhere. People can join from anywhere and we create a really fun sense of community in the process of helping you learn about photography and more. So those are my three favorite things that I'm excited about right now. Okay, switching it up a little bit. What are some tips for someone who wants to get into nature and wildlife photography? First of all, really pay attention to your subjects. Get to know them well. I see a lot of folks who just race out there and go to try to shoot things. But if you don't really understand the subjects, you can't position yourself to get the best shots or understand when or where you might get the best shots. So that would be my first recommendation. Second recommendation is that you don't have to be a super fancy photographer with fancy gear. It's awesome. And when you get there, get there, but you can do things with your cell phone. It's more about understanding what your gear can and can't do and staying within those parameters and you can really get some excellent shots truly um, i have sold work in a gallery from my cell phone because i knew how to use that gear and what types of shots work really well with it and of course i use a lot of different types of gear for different things but don't let the intimidation factor of having to have big fancy gear be your limiter just get started and go have fun with it what has been one of the coolest shoots you've been on? Oh my gosh, way too many to count, especially up here in Alaska. But uh, one of the things that's my favorite is taking folks to go and see the bears. Uh, we can see, depending on where we go, um, I have had 25 bears in view in one single view at one time. Um, and another place that we go, we get into small boats and go looking for bears. And we've been 15 to 20 feet very safely from the bears because we're in deep water in a boat and they're on the shore, but it's been a fantastic experience. Sometimes you have to put the camera down and just watch and feel that moment. It's unbelievable and I never get tired of it. And what has been one of the most challenging shoots? Mm. Challenging shoots would probably be things where we're doing it by boat. So you're unstable because you're on a rocking boat and you have moving subjects and the subjects appear and disappear depending on how the waves come and go. So that's probably some of the most technical shooting I do other than my hummingbird workshops where we do uh, five flash setups. That's pretty technical and challenging, but once you know it, you know it. But I would say doing things from a boat, you know, you don't know what's gonna happen. The whale could surface at any time or the birds could dive underwater and you're gonna miss the puffin shot. So those are some of the most challenging shoots to get is, you know, that wildlife pops up anywhere and you've got to get it. Um, and you do, but it takes some patience and some skill to do it well. What's the coolest animal you photographed? Mm. Oh my gosh, I'm always thrilled to get any decent shot of any animal, but I have to say, this is, uh, they call it Lisa's loon for a reason. But there is a loon that I photograph and it is um, in Alaska here and it's a red throated loon, which is a little different than the typical loons most people think of. It's more unusual. And this loon, I can go right out to the water and it'll come right up to me. I'm not lying. And uh, just 
it's just beautiful to photograph and he'll come up and then he'll leave and he'll fly around a little bit and come back and come up and it's not a bird that would be habituated to humans where you would feed it to get it to come up it is just an amazing thing to see and i'm not encroaching upon its nest i'm not doing anything that would be threatening it just comes for a visit and um, i've been watching this loon for six years now and every year when i come back to alaska i'm always nervous you know is he going to come back or did something happen to him and every year i come back and every year he shows up and we kind of just have this little relationship it's quite amazing where's your favorite place to travel alaska <laughs> right did you have to ask i know you probably wanted to ask but it is Alaska. I actually really love the U.S. As much as other places around the world are amazing, um, there's a certain uh, joy that I have in photographing and not having to travel 30 hours to get somewhere. I love coming up here to Alaska. You know, it's a little longer trip than some, but you're in a totally different place. It's hard to fathom that this is part of the United States because it is so different from everywhere else, and I really love it here. I feel so at home here. Birds or land animals? Oh my gosh. I know I can't answer both, but I'd probably have to say birds simply because that's what I got my start in. That's where my passion is. That's what I first learned as a kid. And that's what I always come back to. And they're so plentiful. You know, you can find birds in your own backyard. You can't find, well, here you can. <laughs> I was going to say moose in your backyard, but uh, many people can find birds in their backyard or at a very local park. It's easy to get to know these animals and to photograph some great things, even common birds. You can really get some great photographs of. And so that has to be my vote for why birds are my favorite. If you could use only one lens forever, which would it be? I would have to say the Tamron 150 to 600 G2, simply because it is such a wonderful, versatile lens. And you know, that lens I can pull back and do uh, multi-stitched panos and get landscape shots, compression landscape shots beautifully. I can do that handheld. The image stabilization is awesome on it. I love the focus on it. It's sharp from end to end. I have great results with it, with the R5 uh, from Canon. and. It's just easy enough and portable enough that I can handhold it and do most of the things I need to use. Yes, I'll use a tripod, but that lens is really versatile. It doesn't mandate that you need it and it fits in my suitcase. So uh, I love that lens. If you weren't a photographer, what would you be? Oh my gosh. I would probably, if I had to completely switch gears and go in a different direction, um, I love Broadway. I would probably be a Broadway singer or something wonderful like that. Um, but I don't know, it would really also have to tie in with nature because that's just something I love. I, um, if you had to pick between you know, city mouse and country mouse, I'm definitely more of a country mouse. So I'd have to be out in nature. What's the best piece of advice you've ever received? So many. Um, I think just some really simple things like be honest, uh, do what you say you're gonna do, be true to yourself, um, and follow your dreams. I, I know that sounds so, um, you know, cliche, but I have, and it's really worked out. You've got to put a lot of work into it. You'll never work harder than you do when you work for yourself, but you also feel really proud about what you do and you can make an impact in the ways that you want. Um, running my business hasn't been easy, but it has been full of joys. And I'm really, really proud of the accomplishments that, I, accomplishments that I've made. And it isn't without a whole bunch of people around me, people like you and everyone else who's watching. Uh, you're all part of the team that you know goes with me everywhere I go and does what I do in one way or another just through the support. So um, yeah, I, I just think being true to yourself, being good to people and being honest um, are three things that are definitely pinnacle to what I do. What's your favorite piece of gear? Oh my gosh, well right now it's my R5 camera. I just love that. But um, in addition to the lens, which I talked about uh, previously, I have to say my tripod, the Photo Pro, um, the Photo Pro Eagle Series tripods are just awesome. Um, I, that thing can collapse down and fit into my backpack or into a carry-on, and yet it can hold, you know, 25, 28 pounds of gear. It is lightweight, stable. It doesn't need you to have to change a ball head on it. There's so many reasons why I love that, that tripod. 
Um, first of all, I hate changing tripod heads and unscrewing one to screw on another. So this does all three, ball head, gimbal head, and video pan head, and I love that. It saves me time, weight, and it's delightful to use. So that would be, other than my cameras, my number one thing that I love to use. If there were to be a movie about your life, who would play you? Oh. You know, On Golden Pond was such an influential and poignant movie for me as a kid for so many reasons, beyond the scope of this interview, but I think Katherine Hepburn would have to play me in my older years because she just has a way about her and captures so much in that particular movie uh, that I just really can relate to. There's so many moments in that movie I can relate to, and so I'd pick her in a heartbeat. Who should we interview next? You know, we've been talking about passion in nature and doing what you love. And I would have to say, you need to interview Piper McKay. She's a friend of mine. She's a wildlife photographer, primarily focuses on work in Africa. And she resides there now. She's from the US, but has moved there. She does incredible work. She's extremely passionate about what she does. And she really, really believes in the human spirit and the, you know, what you can do if you follow your dreams. And I think she'd be an amazing person to interview. Okay, I'll let you get back to it. Thank you so much for answering all of my questions. You are so welcome. And you know, this salmon is just about done. So if you want to stay for dinner, it's pretty delicious. And by the way, I've been using this salt. This is a Kenai River Garlic Company. This garlic spruce tip salt is, is awesome on my salmon. And you're welcome to stay for dinner if you like. Oh yeah. <laughs>